So uh, my name is Andrew Corkin, and I am a producer based out of New York. I have a production company called Uncork Productions that we specialize in commercials, short films, and music videos. Uh, recently, the music video world has opened up a lot more, especially considering the recession of 2008, 2007, and 2009. Also, that the work has become more prevalent again. The labels are putting more money, or at least some money, back into music videos. So I do a lot of work in music videos, and then. I also work in features um, and have produced several features before and always looking to develop more projects. The features that I've worked in traditionally and that the type of uh, features that I want to stick forward with for a while now is sort of the low budget, the really independent features, stuff that's under seven figures. I don't want to typify myself by a genre in particular, by drama, comedy, horror, you know, I, I basically I look for, you know, anything that engages me from the script form on and that can be shot for you know within the hundreds of thousands or you know even something less than that but you know I try to cap my involvement under a million dollars but just again something looking for something that's both commercial and engaging and interesting that will play well critically and marketingly. Um, it's very important. For us in the past, we haven't really had a lot of monetary support from brands and integrated product placement. We've had in-kind support, which is you know always very important, especially when you know the production design budgets are such a significant portion of where the budget is coming from. To, so to get those donations, so in a way they've assisted with the production budget, um, but we've never really had a lot of monetary support. But brands have played a role within the short film work and the feature work that I've done in the past. And of course, I'm always looking to do more work with them and the commercial work that I've done with some of these brands and labels and conglomerates will hopefully lend an avenue to cross over into the more creative work that I'm doing. Absolutely. Right now, VOD is one of the, the top platforms that is available for short filmmakers and even feature films that don't have the opportunity to have a theatrical release. Uh, you know, four years ago, five years ago, even you know, in the past year and a half, a lot of short films they live on online or they live in a festival and then they die there. And a lot of these, you know, brands are taking a risk by putting VOD channels that specialize in short films. I think the first really is, you know, Tribeca is a film festival, Sundance is a film festival that have VOD markets so that they'll have a place for their short films to go after they're seen for this, you know, 10 day, one week period. And then people can actually go and buy them. And the filmmakers have an opportunity to regain some of the money that they put in. I feel that it's always important to recognize that you know the budget that you're putting in that it's, it's silly to place all your money into the production and then not think about the end game. Um, that the that a short fil short film and short video as a whole, you know, you have to realize how you want it to be seen and who you want to see it. And if you have the idea of creating something beautiful that you want the whole world to see, but then don't account for the fact that in order to do that, you need, will need to send it to you know place X, place Y, place place. C, then you're sort of kidding yourself because unless you have some money attached to that, you can't pay the festival entries, you can't play, pay the you know the sales agent, the press people. So yes, it is something that people should consider and that we have considered always. I feel that once once you have sort of a name to yourself in the short film world, I mean, even even for the people that are working on there, you know, the student filmmakers with their thesis projects and everything, if you have a short that you truly believe in, that you feel is strong, as long as you get one festival behind you, a decent film festival, I think that attaching a sales agent is not an unrealistic goal and definitely a very important step to launching yourself and continuing the, uh, the trajectory of the short film. <laughs> There's, there's no direct rules of when you can approach. I, it definitely is in the best favor of having a festival behind you so that, to give it that credibility. However, at the same time, if it has gained some kind of notoriety aside from a festival, so say a short film, you know, a short filmmaker decides not to go to the festival circuit, do the traditional path, and just release online and can say, listen, I can bolster that I have this many views. I have you know, two million views in two months already from this. These are the people that are watching. These 
these are the comments that I've gotten. As long as you have something to back up your work and that you're not the only person that's commenting on behalf of your own work, then that's what a sales agent will look like. They want to look at either, you know, who the audience is if people are watching, you know, viral views, or if they want to know who's watching in terms of the festivals. Thanks so much for sharing your No problem. Thanks for having me.